Hey, let me quickly walk you through the um, choreography example within the flowing retail um, example application. So um, what that does is basically looking at a couple of microservices. In this case, the uh, business story behind that is a very simple dash button. So that basically means you put that next to the washing powder. It's empty. You push the button. One box of washing powder is ordered and sent to you in the background. That means some very simple or probably very sophisticated order fulfillment and workflow has to be executed. Like you have to pay for it. It has to be fetched from the warehouse. It has to be shipped. And if we assume that we have a couple of microservices like the checkout microservice, the payment microservice inventory and the shipment microservice, um, they need to communicate amongst them in order to uh, yeah, to implement that overall end-to-end -end, um, business process. And there are multiple ways of doing that. That's what I discuss overall in the flowing retail example. Um, this short video is about how we do that using choreography. And fast forwarding to that um, slide here, um, and the choreography um, basically works with events only, and events are basically um, emitted by the one microservices, um, like the checkout microservice emits an event, hey, there was an order placed, somebody hit the button. Um, then some other microservice like the payment microservice can subscribe to that and says, okay, I'm interested. Um, then I can collect money, basically, collect the payment. And when I'm done that, I emit another event like, hey, the payment was received. So inventory can subscribe to that, say, oh, if there was payment received, I have to prepare the goods. Um, does that. And whenever that is done, the goods are fetched. We emit another event, shipment um, subscribes to that, takes over and sends out the good. And overall, that implements our end-to-end um, -end business process. That's what's called a choreography um, because basically you're just reacting to other events. There is no conductor, nobody telling anybody what to do, right? And Typically, these event-driven architectures, they use some kind of um, event bus, some infrastructure underneath that can be simple messaging, like, for example, RabbitMQ. In the flowing retail example, I use Kafka as an event bus, um, but technology-wise, that's very um, interchangeable. Okay, so um, what I have running in the background is basically the Java version of that, running all these um, nice little microservices. Um, so I use... Um, Basically, in the background, I use um, Docker Compose um, to run Kafka and a couple of other infrastructure component I, I need over over time, which I will show you. And then I run uh, the different microservices, um, which are basically um, simple, in this case, Java Spring Boot applications. So, um, for example, there's the um, checkout uh, microservice. Um, so if, you, um, if we scroll up, uh, where is it there? Um, you can see, okay, that's a simple Spring Boot application just running, and that one connects to Kafka in order to get, uh, yeah, basically in order to be able to emit events in this case, and yeah, then it um, provides a very, very um, simple UI on port 8091, and that's more or less it, right? So that's uh, my checkout uh, microservice. So what I can do, I can go to that. And this uh, this is why I use the dash button because that's a UI I personally can do as well. And what it, what I can do is as soon as I um, hit this, uh, what you can see is that um, this um, basically uh, receives the the click. Um, it creates an order. It puts it onto Kafka. That's what it basically could see in the log. Um, yeah, in order to make everything in Kafka visible, I mean, I could use Kafka tools like command line tools in order to see what's going on. But I uh, have a very simple um, monitor, um, which just subscribes to Kafka, um, gets all the messages from it, and then shows it here. Okay. Um, what you can see is I have a trace ID within um, the messages or within the events, um, which allows me to um, basically to get all of them together. Um, where you see, okay, this is like one event flow going on, and um, probably we to the to that um, side by side. Um, so what you can see is, okay, there was the order placed event from the checkout microservice. Uh, what you can also see is the payload of that. 
Um, that's uh, probably an interesting detail as one uh, as well. Um, so what you can see is there, there are a couple of things like type ID, source, time, data content type, spec version. Uh, that's that's a good hint. Um, what kind of spec is that? So what I used here is um, the um, so-called cloud events. Um, where is the cloud events spec? Uh, let's use Google for that. Um, right, there's the cloud event spec. Okay, that was actually the one I'm using. Uh, I was searching for, uh, go back. That's the only thing if you have a, a laptop like me and then you run Docker Compose and all the microservices, some things and record, it gets a bit slow. So sorry for that. Um, so there's the cloud event specification, which basically um, eh, da, 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 defines um, how um, basically kind of a header for events. Okay. And um, I just use cloud events here, which are all the um, fields you can see here. And then I added something like the trace ID or um, these are extension to cloud events, that's fine. Um, so everybody is supporting cloud events can understand that message now. And Kafka, for example, they support cloud events, but a couple of other um, tools do as well, which I'll show later on. And then you have kind of the payload, which is here in data, and there you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. Um, I, I just put some JSON in there as the data flow between the microservices, okay? Um, that was the very quick introduction to that. So I'm sending that. What you can see is that I also have the payment service running. So um, here's the payment service. It obviously got that order placed event because um, it did something and says, hey, I, I received the payment. We could look into the um, payload again, but that's probably not too interesting. And then we have the um, inventory service here um, that basically now fetch the goods. Um, no, nothing else happened Why is that because the shipment service is actually not running at the moment. So there's no shipment service here. So what I can do is I can quickly start that. I um, like doing that in order to show that it's really uh, live, that it's really working. And it also gives us um, interesting possibility later on. Yeah, that's what I said. It's unfortunately a bit slower than it should be because I'm running a lot of stuff on my machine at the moment. Um, so let's quickly um, use that time to place another order, which you can see, okay, that's going on. And um, also waiting for um, the shipping service to get up. As soon as the shipping service um, gets up, you will see, and basically just that this one um, continues, okay? So um, yeah. We briefly probably wait for that. Uh, or I'm not the patient person actually to wait for that. <laughs> so um, I'm probably showing something um, in the meanwhile. Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, so we're already connected to Kafka. So um, there I saw the shipment passing by. Um, okay, so we're done. So the goods are shipped and there's even like, um, it's another event for, um, hey, the order is, by the way, completed. Um, okay, so that's a choreography. What you can see is they're just like playing um, together. Um, one big issue with choreo choreographies is actually that it's pretty hard to understand the workflow from that. Um, so I'm, when I use slides, I always use that visualization. It's, it's kind of opaque. There's not one point in your code base where you can look at, hey, how is the order fulfillment actually implemented? So um, it's emerging behavior, it happens during runtime, and that makes it sometimes hard to understand. I have a couple of talks where I go really deep into that question. There, there are good blog posts, like for example, from Martin Fowler, um, who also wrote about that. Hey, it's, that's a big danger. Um, even if that's kind of a nicely decoupled systems, um, you might not realizing that you're losing sight of a larger scale flow and that set yourself up for trouble in future years. Okay, so there, there are a lot of these kind of indications that there might be problems and so on and so forth. Um, one thing we recently did, and I think that's a quite interesting um, uh, tool to look at, um, we, we're having one tool in the stack which is called Commander Optimize. Um, optimize um, basically can, uh, take all the data we have in, in a workflow engine like Kabunda 
and make analyzes on top of that so we can reason about like hey we're a hotspot where does it take long where what's the like the default path or a typical path or where are bottlenecks in the process and so on and so forth so you can do a lot of analysis and what we um, currently teach it to do and we already have an alpha release of that um, is that it can like read events from for example an event bus like kafka and and ingest that into optimize okay so um, basically there's a rest api which allows you to ingest um, events um, also using the cloud event standard so that's pretty um, pretty handy actually because then you can directly read um, these kind of events and already make sense of them um, and correlate them together um, using certain um, information like the trace ID for example and then we can map that to a business process model and do all the analysis on top of that let's quickly do that so I have Optimize running here also um, by Docker Compose. Um, so that's on 90, port 9090. Um, let's quickly log in. Okay, it's a fresh installation. Um, so I click that. Um, what I can do now, uh, it's called event-based processes. So I can create a new process. I want to model it. Um, we did experience with like deriving process models from what we read here automatically. So that might come in later versions, but for the current like product, um, we decided not to include it there yet because it's um, there. there's still um, some issues we, we have to figure out how to do that properly. Uh, but what you can do is you can model your expectation actually. So you can model something like, hey, um, Whenever there's an order placed, um, I expect um, like payment received to happen first, right? Um, it's basically, <laughs> I'm having that here already. So I just remodel that. And then there, there are the goods fetched and then there are probably the goods shipped, right? Um, and then I'm done. Uh, uh, when I'm done, there should be the um, order completed. I think it was called order completed. Uh, message done. So that's more or less the, the workflow I would um, uh, assume to happen. That's uh, my order fulfillment. And what you can do now is you can add a new event source. And we called it external events. And what you can see is that um, there are already the events um, ingested, which happened um, basically here, right? Um, so this is happening by a small component which also runs in docker compose probably we quickly show that right there's a docker ps so you see um there's opti there's a um, optimized ingester and that basically subscribes to kafka reads all the events on a certain topic all the records um, look into that knows it's a, a cloud events um within there and that just pushes that to the right rest api in, um, in optimize so we have them here and now we can map them we can say hey the order placed event kicks off a new workflow um the payment received event actually finished that one the goods fetched events uh fetched event finished that one goods shipped event finished that one and um then we have the order completed um that marks the end of the workflow okay so we mapped all of these events and put that on, onto our expectations can save that and now we can publish the workflow. Um, the UI might change in like the release version. That's what I said. We're currently working with the alpha um, pre-release here. Um, what it now do, does is basically a bit of number crunching and processing all the events um, in order to, um, to really make all the analysis possible. That should normally not take too long, depending on the amount of data you have. And now we can um, create reports of that. So you could say, hey, I want to have a new... Um, process report based on that um, order fulfillment we just created. Um, and for example, I can look at the um, duration of certain um, elements within there and visualize that as a heat map, okay, and save that. What I can see already is like, for example, hey, this one is pretty fast in like on average one second. This is also pretty fast. Um, I mean, it's actually pretty slow to be honest, but that's because my computer is doing a lot of things. And but this one 
took quite long, like two minutes and 30 seconds. That was more or less because I, I just um, started the shipping service later on. And then what you can see is like, for example, if I do more orders now, um, they're, they're faster because the um, shipping is already um, started. And that data is also um, now directly ingested into Optimize. It's near real time. So it might, I mean, with my setup currently, everything is a bit slower. Um, so it might take a probably a couple of seconds to to end up here. Um, I but we could already see that number um, going down, right? So uh, if you do a couple of other things. Um, over time, that should go down. Yeah, I'm really stressing my computer here. Um, right, so that number is going down, right? Um, so you can see it's kind of really real life what you can see, what you can do there. So um, that's the choreography um, that's a possibility to to start understanding the choreography for me that's a very very important first step that you can like this is how i visualize it that mikado that you can understand the puzzle what your services are doing in a way um, you can start digging into that from a business perspective which is actually very important um, it's still that it's hard to change. So I, I, I don't think that's an optimal situation for that order fulfillment workflow at hand. Um, because like, for example, if you want to change ordering saying, uh, hey, um, payment retrieval can be, do, can be done in parallel, uh, but we want to fetch the goods already to be faster or whatever. If you have requirements of changing sequences here, it's pretty hard to do that in a choreography. And there are lots of lots, lots and lots of examples showing that. Um, but this is where um, you might want to jump to the orchestration example also within the um, within the flowing retail because there there's an orchestration example as well showing you um, doing the same thing um, orchestrated having an order um, microservice um, basically controlling a couple of the other things um, but that's a different recording. I will do that in a minute. Um, feel free to jump to it now if you want to want to um, go forward with that. Um, thank you for watching.